Good afternoon and welcome to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And we're excited to welcome you here today. I'd like to welcome my beautiful wife Jody into the studio. How you doing, babe? I'm wonderful, honey. How are you? I'm doing good. A little cold. <laughs> we're long he has he has a sweatshirt on. Never, That's, never happens. Doesn't happen very often. He has his papa sweatshirt on. Yeah. Uh, grandsons will be happy to hear that yes they will be but uh hey we want to say hello to our viewers out on facebook hi guys good afternoon and to those of you listening on hope radio 24 7.com we want to welcome you and uh, we want to thank <clears throat> sorry i thought i was gonna sneeze still working I, on it as we said it's a it's a it's a uh a little cool out here in Corona today. Feels kind of weird today. You're back on that side of the table. I am. Uh, if you didn't catch our show the last two weeks, we had guests in here, so Jody was sitting by my side, which kind of good thing. That's a normal thing, but with that, so. I'm thinking Rock and Brews is having that nice little thing for the Paris kids. Oh, uh, okay. Just saying. All right. 
could happen. Anyhow. But, um, yeah. Where was I going? I don't know. I right out the window, apparently. <laughs> hey, Sean, how was vacation? It was awesome. Yeah. Really Sean, awesome. Tell everybody where you went. My, I took my whole family, um, my wife and all of our kids. It was just awesome. First time we've ever done that. So. Oh, cool. That is yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, really and I know cool. you had a good time because you came back all relaxed and you couldn't remember things like passwords and stuff. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, it was it was rough rough morning. I know. But, <laughs> it it but, was. I I was so confused on what day it was this morning, <laughs> trying to wake up and get here, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Very. Well, we're glad you're back. Yep. Anyhow, we now want... back to the grind. There you go. <laughs> well, as always, we invite you to leave comments or ask us questions. You can post to our live Facebook page at Day by Day with Rob and Jody, or at Hope Radio twenty four seven. And uh, be sure to let us know where you're listening uh, from or viewing from. We like to hear that. And if and, you got prayer requests, if you got a prayer request, yeah, uh, come on uh, Facebook uh, Facebook feed there for Day by Day with Rob and Jody or Hope Radio twenty. And uh, if you caught any of our promos, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about grief today, a mm-hmm. uh, subject that uh, a lot of people are dealing with uh, in the aftermath of uh, the events down in Parkland, Florida, uh, last week. Uh, tragic event. We're not going to we're not going to harp on the tragedy of it, but we're going to talk about how to deal with some of that grief today. So mm-hmm. why don't we start out with a word of prayer, and we'll include the the folks that are. Uh, dealing with that. So, ears be open, their hearts receptive to the message that we have today. To those that are listening, Lord, who need who need help, who need relief from grief, Lord, we hope that we're able to convey to them uh, your way to deal with grief, Lord. We hope we're able to give them comfort and, and a way that they can can move past. This, these events and uh, other events in their lives, Lord, not just this event, but uh, to be able to apply them at, at other necessary times in their life. So, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be your mouthpiece, and Lord, we thank you. So, uh, last Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, Valentine's Day? No, it wasn't Valentine's Day, was it? It was the day after Valentine's Day. The shooting? Yeah. It was Valentine's Day. It was Day. Valentine's Day? Yeah, oh. he chose that day on purpose. Oh, my goodness. Well, it tells you. I was paying attention to other things on Valentine's Day, honey. This is day, Valentine's Day. Uh, as most of you, I'm sure, know, uh, a young man, 19 years of age, uh, went into the high school there in Parkland, Florida, and uh, took uh, the lives of 17 innocent uh, individuals. And injured over a dozen. And injured over a dozen. Most of them children, um, a few adults in there as well, and um, a, a tragic, tragic day. Mm-hmm. Um, all around. All around. And, and Or you're you're just you're feeling for the families and and feeling for the teachers and the students and and all of that. Or uh, you're just someone that all of a sudden it grabbed you. Yeah. It yeah. was like watching. I mean, I I know it grabbed me. Whenever I was watching, all of a sudden I'm watching about you know one other thing on Fox News, and then bam, instant news came on that said there'd been a shooting. It was all live. It was all up there on the screen. I couldn't even step away. It was so much. It just grabbed me. Yeah. And I'm like, and all of a sudden, I started grieving. And I'm going, wait a minute. This is, it, it is a tragedy. Yes. It's not a personal tragedy. Right. Right. But that's how today's news media or any other article or any situation, it can grab you. Mm-hmm.
definitely grabs you. The, the way the media is designed today is that we get all of that information right now, mm -hmm. and, and we don't even have the information, and we're getting the information. Right, you know? and you get overloaded. And it, and it, and it draws you into it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, yeah, after a while you get yeah, overloaded. Yeah, you get overloaded. Too. Uh, and, and some people get to a point where that grief just kind of overcomes them, and, and it's it's not an easy thing to deal with. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, enough of the sad stuff. Let's. Uh I mean, ways of grieving, of course, but there's also different circumstances that cause grief. Right. It could be as simple as um, I'm sure that Sean, maybe you can chime in for a second. I'm sure you grieved whenever you had your heart attacks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there's different ways of grieving. You know, I mean, I grieved over my first marriage, you know, basically getting tossed in the trash can. And what everybody told me is that you're grieving like accidents. There's... There's a bad grade in school, loss and you of a could, job. you know, loss of a job, a big one. Yeah. You know, and uh, seriously, and if it's a high school student or anybody, a uh, middle school, if they're grieving over a bad breakup of a girlfriend or a boyfriend, they don't know what's going on. They're yet they're new to hormones. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like you know how you know how's the grieving process hit them? Hormones don't affect anything. I'm just saying. Is there a proper one, two, three step program mm -hmm. to deal with it? And the answer to that is really no. But then really, yes, there is. There's there's signs that you can look for. And that's what we want to go over today is some of those signs. Um, it was a big subject for me whenever I was in Bible college on how to go ahead and, and deal with different circumstances in ministry. And one of our references, we had to read uh, a book. one and it's still pertinent today on how to go ahead and get through the state the 10 stages of grief now some people say it's five some people say it's seven it's really 10 when you get down to it if you break it down properly and we're not going to go ahead and do the whole hour on this that would just be nuts we'd have you know college course 101 on that one and we don't want to do grief 101 we want to get conquering grief And if we don't, we, we're going to, you know, pray that the family will understand what's going on. So this is what's happening when, um, with the good, <clears throat> excuse me, with the good grief book and the different phases of what happens. Uh, normally, the first phase is shock. And you don't want to stay there too long. You're going to be there. It could be there a week. You could be there a month. But the faster you get out of that um, shock period, the faster you will move forward. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you individually can do it. You can't do it in a week. You're not going to get any kind of um, award at the end of it going, Yoo-hoo! I conquered grief! But yes, in Jesus Christ, you can conquer grief. That's mm -hmm. the cool thing. Always keep Jesus in the forefront. Yeah. So here, um, just got the list of ten. We're going to go through them. So grab your pen and paper. Might come in handy someday, God forbid. But if all else fails, let's see here. Number one, the shock factor. The state of shock. That, ha that sets in after the event happens. Number two is how we express our emotion. That could be a lot of things. There's anger, there's panic, there's depression, there's a whole bunch of things. That feel, and that's okay. You Again, there is not a roadmap to this no. there's not a right there's not a wrong but you do need to keep moving through don't get stuck in any of these 
Um, again, you might feel depressed. You might feel very lonely. That's number three. Number four, um, you may experience physical symptoms of distress where you just physically can't move. Uh, you might be all achy and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you got to watch out for those. And if that's something that you need to go see, you may need to go see your family doctor, your family practitioner to go ahead and say something's going on. I need a little help right now. And that's, that's okay. Do that. If that's what you need to do, do that. And this is this is this this is a secular teaching at the moment, but we gotta go ahead and have you know, and then we're gonna jump into some Bible verses, and then just gonna say uh, number five that you may feel panicky, pins and needles, mm -hmm. anxiety may be flaring right up at you. And you may not understand what what how do I feel? What do I do? Again, it's okay. If you need a little help to take the edge off, go to your family doctor and say I need some help. Hello, recovery center, hope recovery center. So don't let that, you know, lead to any kind of addiction. We don't want to see you as a client. We love you as a person come on over and visit but we you know we don't want to make any more clients here and then you might feel a uh, sense of guilt about the loss mm -hmm. like you could have been there in some way to save your that person what could i have done differently uh school today and i pushed him to go because they had a test that you'll have to work through that. That is one you got to work through. Seriously, and this is where the Bible study is going to come in handy here. The the Bible scriptures, because we want to go ahead and say yes, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit is our Comforter, and we need to have comfort that the Holy Spirit will provide to go ahead and get through this sense of guilt. Number. Kind of resentment in this, any kind of hostility in this situation that could cause you to lash out at the very people you should be coming together with, and the ones that you love the most is that's the ones you're going to lash out at. Yeah. Just be aware, and it could it's good, and they're going to be hurting too. So, you got you know, every all the family in this situation will go ahead and be grieving and they're grieving in different steps and different levels at different times. Or they may be in guilt or resentment and you need to understand, well, I can see where you are. Do you see where I am? And it's hard, and especially God help. I have never done this. I don't want to do this. I've never grieved a child. And God help the people who are grieving children lost in Florida last week. I mean, and even saying that simple sentence. Florida, Pam Bondi, the uh, attorney general, they're paying for all the, flu the, for all the funerals. Mm -hmm. So nobody gets ripped off by the funeral homes. I mean, that, that, right. think about that. Right. One less thing you have to worry about. One less thing to worry about. Mm -hmm. I mean, now think about, you know, in the Jewish tradition, you don't get embalmed. You go right into, this is lack of way, you're, you get buried. That's just the facts. And then, you know, like for a Christian one, you could get embalmed, you can wait 10 days, you can have the big home going, and that whatever you want to celebrate that person's life, that's great and fantastic. And celebrate to beat the band, have a party, celebrate that person. And right now, again, right now you're probably still in the shock of it. If you're anywhere in the, you know, in the resentment.
You need to process this. Um, number eight will be you're unable to return to usual activities. You can't even go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know after my mother passed away and everybody is going to deal with the death of a parent. Um, unless It was enough to me to where I couldn't even go to the grocery store. Yeah, I knew where she was. I knew she was in heaven. I watched her go. I got stories. I know the Lord was in the room. And I saw things that, you know, I would I will take to the grave with me, unless the Lord says, finish my book, to go ahead and say, this is how you need to process it. I would cry in the middle of Ralph's in the grocery, in Kroger's. I, you know, I'd cry in the middle of the, of the uh, farmer's market. Five years later, it'll hit you 20 years later. You'll just be thinking or doing something at Thanksgiving, and all of a sudden you'll have a flash of an old way it used to be, an old memory. And then you'll ha I hope it's a happy cry, and it's not a depressing cry. Because if it's that far removed, it should be a good memory. Right. But it, right now, you're probably not even to the stage yet of trying to get back to usual activity. Uh, job, bosses, everything that will allow you to go through the grieving process. That will give you at least a couple months off of bereavement not just three days and go back to work but hey we'll take whatever you can get and hopefully you guys can get through it with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ and then number nine gradually hope comes through and when the hope comes it's like yeah I can pull the curtains back I'd go to the grocery store maybe I'll go to Starbucks maybe I'll drive by the place where everything happened or not just saying but it's just something where you take baby steps now this is farther along in the process this is a seriously a list of how it works then you're going to run into a little bit of a struggle to readjust your reality yep I'm gonna do it now I'm gonna um, take the bull by the horns and just say life is I got to start living life now right now I have to honor the person that died or the person that went through the divorce or the person that went through the situation I need to say yes I will live my life again to the fullest to glorify my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah yeah good stuff in his book, Good Grief. And, uh, you know, there's, as Jody said earlier, there's many lists available of, you know, some five, some seven, whatever, but that's a pretty good description of the process of grief. Mm -hmm. And everybody does it differently. Everybody does it different time frame. So what we want to do though today is we want to give you some hope and give you some uh, biblical standards and let you know what, what God's way of dealing with grief is. Um, you know, grief is, And uh, he, he made a way for us to get through it, mm -hmm. as he does with so many things. That's right. So. He gave us the road map. This, this book, the Bible I'm holding up, mm -hmm. is literally a life manual. It will tell you everything to, you know, except probably what your car payment is. But it'll help you get the car payment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll probably tell you not to have a car payment. That's true, it does. we should owe no I'm man just nothing. Saying, so. ah, I know. But I'm bummed. He got me on that one. We talked today is going to be from the NIV, mm -hmm. and um, we'll just start with the first one here. I like Matthew 5, verse 4. Matthew 5, verse 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, 
for they will be comforted. Mm -hmm. That's from the Beatitudes. It's telling us that we're going to mourn, we're going to grieve, you know? One, three through four. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in trouble, in any trouble, with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That doesn't say in some of our troubles. He said, troubles. Why? So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we have received. You know, when we're grieving, you know, you always you always hear, give out of your need. I, I think that totally applies to right now, too. When we're grieving and we are comforted, we need to offer that comfort to others. You know, that in addition to offering that comfort to them, it's, it's going to be therapeutic for us. And I don't know what my wife's doing over there, but... I am answering a question on Facebook. <laughs> they wanted me to post the name of the book and the author, so I did that. Okay. Dr. Granger Westberg in Good Grief was the book. With 10 Strategies of Grief. Yeah. There we go. So, uh, let's go to Isaiah 41.10. Yes. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. With my righteous right hand. Mm-hmm. And it's really good to know that number one, he's saying, do not fear. That's number one. Mm-hmm. And in all the verses, Old Testament and New Testament, it's either do not be afraid or do not fear. And a lot, of, he's telling the disciples all the time, standing you know, on the water, going, do not fear, it is I. Take courage. We're saying the same thing, right. you know, be it to Mary or to Joseph, they're all saying, you know, do not be afraid, do not fear. And, and what I love about this verse, not only does he tell you not to fear, but he tells you why not to fear. That's right. For I am with you. Mm-hmm. I will strengthen you and help you. That should get you through just about anything. I would take that and post it on the mirror on a piece of paper. Like yeah, we do. Yeah. All right, Isaiah 43 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Mm hmm. Psalm 18:28 Darkness into light. Yep. No matter what you're going through, mm-hmm. God's going to turn it around. He is. He's going to make it good for you. It, there might be a process. There might be a process. Yes. It might take a little while, but he will turn it as long as you keep moving. Keep looking forward. Keep Jesus Christ in in front of you. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's like flipping on a light switch and there's Jesus standing in the room. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Mm-hmm. Gee, sounds easy. Like 
and an ever-present help in trouble. There he is with you again. He's Just as you set up in Isaiah 41.10, for I am with you. Mm-hmm. How about Revelation 21.4? He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Mm-hmm. Now, some people will tell us that's the millennial church and everything's fine. There's no more crying in heaven and there's no more tears. And I got to tell you, there is a tear bottle up in heaven for every person that's ever lived on this planet. And God is gathering up all your tears. It's a lot of bottles. Uh huh. It's a lot of, that's a lot of crying. <laughs> yeah, it is. And whenever you get really into a good, deep, guttural cry, you know that's a lot of water coming down. And if God is able to go ahead and count the very hair on your head, he is counting how many teardrops. He loves you that much. Well, you know what? We're up against a commercial break. Oh, it's that time. So we're going to take it away for a break here, and uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with Day by Day with Rob and Jody. You're listening to Hope Radio 20- Hey guys, I want to thank and introduce you to my friends down at Animal Medical Center of Corona. Dr. Bart and his crew down there have believed in Hope Radio 247.com since the very beginning, and they have been one of our very first sponsors at our very brand new radio station. So, if you guys are looking for a little modern medicine with old-fashioned care. Go see Dr. Bart. Phone number is 951-493-6771. Again, their address is 91 East Grand Boulevard, Corona, California. Telephone number 951-493-6771. Like I said, tell them Sean sent you. Godspeed, my friends. Hey, everyone. This is Sean Kelly from the Hours of Hope Radio Show, and I'm just here to tell you about something near and dear to my heart. Outpatient Recovery Center, who helps people with any hurt, habit, or addiction. The services we provide here are free of charge and available to anyone. We found the vast majority of people, they don't need a professional psychiatrist. What they really need is someone to listen to them, someone to love them, and to be part of something, a family in particular. For more information, call 951-603. Or visit our website at www.hoperecoverycenterinc.org. As I always say, Godspeed, my friends. What up, everyone? This is Ramon with Epic Thoughts and Hope Lounge on Hope Radio 24-7. And attention all you artists, musicians, and producers. We have a brand new opportunity for you here at Hope Recovery Center. We have our very own studio. ministry in the arts and for the month of february for this month only we are having a special for anybody who wants to come use the studio we're having a one-time special for the month of february two hours for 125 dollars. that's right you get a full recording for two hour minimum of 125 dollars. for more information email me at hope studio at hope recovery center inc.org Welcome back to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. And uh, just a quick note there, uh, you heard Ramon 
uh, talking about the Hope Studio here. So we want to encourage you, if you're uh, an aspiring artist or uh, uh, worship leader or anything like mm-hmm. that, and you want to get some something recorded, uh, what a great opportunity to come in here to Spoken word, poetry, anything. Absolutely, absolutely. Narrative reading of... Uh, mm-hmm. Hey, read the yeah. Bible. What the heck? There you go. Yeah. So uh, we want to encourage you to do that. And, of course, uh, Hope Recovery Center here is uh, for your needs. Uh, any of those with ho- hurts, habits, and addictions, uh, we want to encourage you to reach out to Hope Recovery Center here in Corona, California. Uh, you can contact them on the web at hoperecoverycenterinc.org. And uh, they do great work over here. So... Anyhow, continuing on with the uh, subject that we picture here with you that uh, really uh, helps helps you to get through that time, and um, we also want to uh, point out again the book that Jody referenced earlier, "Good Grief" by Dr. Granger Westberg, uh, the talking about the ten stages of grief and and obviously how to get through those and all that. So. Uh, we should continue on here, huh? Mm-hmm. And this is the Holy Bible book. Hopefully everybody's got one. Yeah. If not, let us know. We'll get you one. And uh, day by day at tcbforjc.org. That's day by day at tcbforjc.org. And we'll be happy to send you a, a copy of the notes so that you have all those uh, Bible references. So let's go on with Psalm 119, verse 50, which says, My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Mm-hmm. The promises of God, they, they preserve our life. Yeah, what a, what a great uh, comfort that is. How about Romans 8? Verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Hang on, don't you double check something for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> Had to put our email out here. Or our, uh, <clears throat> for the show notes, I put it out here on the Facebook page. There we go. Make sure I got the right ending on that email address. Again, that's day by day at tcb for jc.org. So we're talking about Romans 8.18. All righty. Here we go. Romans 18.18. 8.18. Eight, eight. <laughs> Try to get 8. Okay. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Yep. I got news for you. As much as we grieve down here, the person that is in heaven right now that has gone through a tragedy, I'm, I'm, I'll stick to the shooting, has got those 17 people have gone to stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't. And you see the glory of the Father. You see Father God, God Almighty, and Jesus Christ standing there going, Well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome into the rest. Welcome into the peace. Welcome into your new home. I know one of our verses that we're going to get into, and I'll peek ahead, is uh, John 14, 1 through 4, where it talks about that in my Father's mansion, So if he hasn't said that he, he, if he didn't say he was going to go ahead and prepare a place for us, what hope do we have of life eternal? But like I said, I don't think they want to come back. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure there's a time up there where they say, okay, you're here. The shock of what happened. I'm sure they go through a little shock and awe too. 
I know whenever I saw the Lord, I was going through a little shock and awe. Mm -hmm. And yet going, he's telling me. wanted to go and I felt like I had concrete shoes on yep. so I knew I was it knew it wasn't my time but yep. I'm sure that in this situation those kids just dropped their earth suits and just kept going that coach that blocked the bullets from hitting any of the other kids and saved lives I'm sure he has a special place in heaven so do the, mm -hmm. both of the teachers all of them they yep. all have a martyr's place in heaven I believe because yeah. of what they've gone through. Christians, and I don't know. That's not for me to know. That's not for me to judge. That's not for me to even worry about. But I do know that what I believe, what Rob believes, what we believe here at Hope, is that everybody will get into heaven as long as Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I haven't even seen the glory of heaven yet, but I know I don't want to come back. I know. You don't. You, know? you do not want to come back. How about Psalm 18 and 2? The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Mm -hmm. I just like the beginning of that one. The Lord is my rock. There used to be an old commercial on TV in the 70s. <laughs> As Rob giggles, he knows where I'm going. Rock out in the ocean somewhere. I can't even tell you what rock it was. But it was just one of those things that was just solid. And you just knew that everything in you was like, yes, that's the rock. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's almost like, um, who's the actor they call the rock? Uh, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. You know, when he walks in the room, that's the rock. You know, you feel strength. You feel security. You feel like, yes, I can do this. I can handle this. me all his angels are with me i will be able to conquer grief in jesus name i can do all things through christ jesus who strengthens me i am a world overcomer i can do this with only jesus's help and you can do it too absolutely okay first 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 <laughs> let me try that again First Thessalonians. There you go. Chapter four, verse thirteen through eighteen. Those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. That whole passage is fantastic, uh, right? Uh, I love it right up, right to the, I love this point. Bible verse, yes, it talks about the blessed hope, the rapture of the church. But think about it in an individual case. Where it's like, it says, do not grieve like the rest of mankind. We want to grieve the way the Bible tells us to grieve. Now, granted, we had the secular point that was used in a Bible college 
that I attended whenever I And this is what we need to go ahead and focus on is how to get through the 10 steps. Now getting through those 10 steps of a mankind situation here, we need to infuse the Bible into that and take these Bible verses and infuse it and then take a big, long, tall drink and say, this is how we do this in Jesus' name. And you want to remember that, Jesus, that we believe Jesus died and rose again. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And the most important decision that you could ever make in your life is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. It will help you now on this side of eternity, and it will help you on the other, the other side. One day we will all be on the other side of eternity. And it's going to be, where are you going to be? Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. It, God forbid, I got to ask you, if you were to in Florida, had no idea they were going to meet their maker that day. Absolutely. They're going to a football game. They're going to go to track meets. They're going to go play in the band. But they're not going to go meet Jesus that day. And sure enough, in a twinkling of an eye, they met him personally. And that's where we need to be thinking about your grieving process. You won't care when you meet Jesus face to face. And I know I met him. June of 1992 in my mother's dining room sliding down the dining room wall at about midnight because I had messed up and that's where I realized what was going on my first husband had left me holding the bag and the seven year old and abandoned us and I didn't know what to do but I said Jesus take my life and do something with it heart Jesus will come into your heart and he will be with you through this process of grieving. You don't need a, an invitation for this. Right. And I know it wasn't a voluntary invitation to do this. No matter how you want to get in there and do it, just jump in with both feet and go, Lord, Jesus, you and I will get through the grieving process together and you will still have, you'll still be sane. I can promise you that. Don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. And again, if you need hope recovery, come and see us. We'll help you get through the grieving process. We're here for you. Okay. Moving on. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need, just to go ahead and say, I need... It's like taking a piece of paper or taking something and throwing it across the room. You've just casted. My husband's a fisherman. Casted? Well, you know, you're casted it. No. Uh, you're, you're throwing it away. You don't want to hold it anymore. Whenever you cast a line into the water, you're fishing. You're casting. So you need to kind of get a visual here. Take your car keys and throw them onto the couch. You've just thrown it. You've casted the anxiety, the fear. I know the grammar. Forget it. But, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> Don't write me letters. Or do write me letters. Hey, what the heck? Yeah. You know, but, yeah, go ahead and realize that you need to understand you're, you're throwing away your cares. You're throwing away the worries. You're throwing away the anxiety, the fear. You don't need it. The 
and move forward here to Psalm 23, 4. It says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Once again, the Lord's saying he's going to be there with you no matter what it is you're going through. Yep. This is one you always hear at funerals. Yeah. Psalm, Psalm 23. 23. This is the one I always, I actually told my mother this. Heaven. She's moving to heaven. In the hospital, she's got physically moving to heaven. And again, I mean, I saw her. I did their shows back in the early, probably May of last year that we did about describing that testimony. If you don't, if you want it, let me know. I'll get you the number of that show and you can listen to it. But this one here where it says, I'll just do the King James where it's, yay, yay, though I walk through the valley. run to you run to jesus don't you stay in that valley of death you keep running to jesus you run to him no matter what is there you keep on running until you see jesus and then you fall at his feet and you worship him and my mom knew this but i'm a coach at the time i was a coach at a christian high school of course i'm going to coach my mom on how to get to heaven that could irritate people but i did exactly that transplant at 78 years old yeah. so you know it was, it was time for her to go to heaven and i recognized that and the lord gave me grace peace comfort that was beyond any understanding mm -hmm. i humanly could not fathom what i was saying and yet i was saying it so the, the holy spirit is amazing and even during the time of grief Of love pure love and just say I love you I want to be with you let me help you through this process right. wow. Psalm 73 26 my flesh and my heart may fail but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever mm -hmm. there you go this is Psalm 30 verse 5 and this one's in the Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You need to take the last part of that verse. Weeping may endure for a night. Please, God, don't make it a long night. Mm -hmm. If you start weeping at 1 o'clock in the morning and you're going at 8 o'clock in the morning, that's a long night. <laughs> but joy, J-O-Y, comes early in the morning. And I said early in the morning on purpose. As long as I say about don't stand. Ten stages. I like this one. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Mm hmm And you'll notice we have a lot of psalms. The psalmist David, or Moses, was wonderful in how to describe what was going on. And knows you're crushed right now. And he will build you up. That's why we're talking about strength and fear not. And to understand that you are loved. Mm -hmm. The Lord loves you and he wants to help you through this process Matthew eleven twenty eight. come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest first Corinthians 15 52 through 57 in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, 
The dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's where you go ahead and you say, okay, I love this part. Where, O death, is your victory? That Right there. Yeah. And that's where you go ahead and say, death, where is your sting? People are afraid of dying because they don't understand the process. Mm-hmm. And nobody does. I don't want to go through the process. I want to go in the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Let's experience something new. I mean, I know dead in Christ will rise and blah, blah, blah. I, I get that. But I'm just saying, I want to go ahead. First, and then all those who are caught up later will rise then, right after that. I guess either way, we get to rise through the either air. Either so way, we we're rising through ride the air. Way, so. That's right. It's going to be a joy, glorious day. <laughs> but yeah, where's the sting? Where's the where's the victory of death? It's not there. It, God is taking, Jesus Christ took that away at the cross. Get me on a soapbox. Preach it all day. hearts be troubled G- grief is trouble yes do not let your hearts be troubled or you can say do you, not let your hearts be grieved yeah you believe in god believe also in me my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would i have told you that i'm going there to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come back and take you to be with me that you going Mm -hmm. that's it and you'll know the way to where he's going if you have jesus christ in your heart and if you read the bible if you've made jesus christ your lord and savior Mm -hmm. you're on the right path and how about this one our griefs and carried our sorrows yep and that's one for the bathroom mirror that's one for the bathroom mirror if you're experiencing grief God has already borne that grief Mm -hmm. and he's carried our sorrows for us so that we don't have to carry them right and that's like you you gotta figure the, the way they're carrying back then was that it was like an ox carrying the yoke mm-hmm. across the that burden, you're carrying that stress. Right. Right. And that's what you need to cast off, is literally take it and throw it to the ground and say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore in Jesus' name. I'll get right. through this grief in Jesus' name and with Jesus' help. You know, I'm feeling the need right now that uh, we're, we're talking about so much of grief need right now to just uh, pray for those that maybe there's somebody out there listening that uh, hasn't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior and uh, we want to give you an opportunity to do so right now so so we're gonna we're gonna pray a prayer here and if that's you that uh, we're talking about then just uh, repeat this prayer after me Say, Father God. Father God. Uh, I come to you now. I come to you now. A grieving and broken person. A grieving and broken person. 
time. Will help me through this time. And that by believing in you. And that by believing in you. Confessing my sins today. Confessing my sins today. And accepting you as my Lord and Savior. And accepting you as my Lord and Savior. I will be saved. I will be saved. And that you will carry my grief. And that you will carry my grief. So, Lord, I make you my my Savior. Help me to live. Help me to live the way you would have me live. The way that you want me to live. So that the promises of the Bible. So that the promises of the Bible may come true in my life. May come true in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. Close up today. Uh, if you live here in the Corona, California area, we have a Bible study here at Hope Recovery Center each Thursday afternoon from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And for more information, you can go to Hope Recovery website at hoperecoverycenterinc.org. We also have another Bible study on Friday at 12.15. Yeah, 12.15 to 1.30. Camera Doss of God's Amazing Plans on Friday morning here on Hope Radio 24-7. So uh, we invite you to check us out on Facebook at Day by Day with Rob and Jody and leave us some feedback, or you can check out our website at www. Day at tcbforjc.org and indicate the topic of the show, and we will be happy to get those notes off to you. I want to leave you a closing blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Until next week, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. Rob and Jody.